Hello everyone, myself Shivangi Desai. I am your instructor for the video series of Python for Data Science. Today's our topic is Visualization Basics. So in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about matplotlib library which is used for visualization in Python. So let's get started. Well, matplotlib is one of the most popular package which is used for data visualization. It provides an object-oriented API that helps in embedding plots in applications using Python GUI toolkits and it gives the output in 2D format. So, to use this matplotlib in Python, we have to import the library using import matplotlib.pyplot.spld. We are also using this line magic function that is matplotlib inline which is used to give the necessary support to IPython while working with the matplotlib. So let's say a code, how we can draw a line using this matplotlib library. So first I am importing the library that is import matplotlib.pyplot.splt. Also I am going to use some of the numpy method that's why I am also importing numpy as np. Now I am taking an array for the x coordinate and y coordinates. So, to take an array, we have the method np.array. np is our numpy alias name and array is numpy's inbuilt method to declare an array. So, inside variable x points, I am taking the coordinates for the x1 and x2. That is np.array. Then I am passing the coordinate for x1 and x2. Same for the y coordinates, I am taking the variable y points and using np.array, I am defining the coordinates for y1 and y2. Now, using plt.plot method, here remember this plt is the alias for matplotlib.pyplot. So, using the alias plt, I am calling the method plot, that is plt.plot inside which I am passing the x coordinates and y coordinates using the variable x points and y points. And at last we need to call the plt.show method. So let's run this code. As you can see in this output we have a line connecting two points that we have plotted using this x points and y points. That is the x1 is 1 and y1 is 3. So the first point is at 1 comma 3 and x2 is 8 and y2 is 10. So the second point is at 8 comma 10 and there is a line connecting both of the points. Now we can use the different symbol to represent these points. For that we have to use this marker parameter. Inside the plot method we have to pass the value for the marker. So here I am passing small o. So let's check what it will display. So at both the end, that is our both the point will be represented using a filled circle. Now if I want a triangle, I have to use a caret sign. So here in the marker, I am using this caret sign. So it will represent both the points in filled triangle. And at last we have an option of asterisk sign. So using this asterisk sign, we can represent both the point with a star, that is fill star. So these are the different variation that we can apply to represent our points. We can also change the style of the line. If we want to connect both the points using dotted line, then we have to use line style parameter in which in quotes we are supposed to pass dotted. So when I run this code, you can check the line is now connected with the dotted lines. The other two variations are dashed and dot dashed. So when I want to use the dash line, I have to pass line style is equal to dash. So let's run this code. Now you can see that uh, the line is now in a dash format and the third option is dash dot. So it is a combination of both the previous option. So now our line will be present in dot, dash dot dash dot manner. So these are the style options for the line as well as point. For point we need to use marker and for line we have to use line style. Now let's take an example for the static data of temperature. Here I have defined four different lists. The first list represents the number of days. Second list represents the minimum temperature. Third list represents the maximum temperature and fourth list represents the average temperature. Now I want to plot the maximum temperature based on the different days. 
So let's use this variables in plt.plot method. The first variable is days and second variable is max temperature. Why? Because on the x axis I want the value of the days and on the y axis I want the value of the max temperature. That's why the first argument is days and second argument is max temperature. So let's run this code. So now you can check on the x axis we have the values for the different days while on the y axis we have the values of the maximum temperature. We can also plot multiple lines in a single graph. Say for example in here I am plotting days and maximum temperature, days and minimum temperature and a third line is for the days and average temperature. So I am plotting all these three values in a single graph. So now you can check that all three data is plotted here. Now it is difficult to understand from this figure that what is the significance of x axis or y axis or what are the representation of this different line right. So to give the label to the x axis we need to use plt.x label method in which I am going to pass the string that I want to display on the x axis. Second to display some string on the y label we have the method plt.y label in which I am going to pass the string that I want to show on the y axis. And at last we have the plt.title method which can be used to give the title to the entire graph. Here I am using plt.plot method to display different data. So in the first plot I am displaying days uh, and maximum temperature. In the second plot I am uh, passing days and minimum temperature as well as I am changing the line style for this particular uh, plotting. And for the third I am passing days in average temperature where I am passing the value for the marker. So let's run this code. Now you can see the x label that is weekdays is associated with the x axis. The y label that is temperature is associated with the y axis. And the third parameter that is plt.title which is a weather forecast is displayed on the top of the graph. Now if you want to change the font style or color of these labels it is possible to do so. Now for that we need to declare a dictionary. Here I am declaring two dictionary that is font1 and font2 in which I am taking the key is a parameter name and value for that parameter. So here first I am accessing the family parameter and passing the value serif. I am taking the second parameter that is color and third as size. Right. So I had declared two different dictionary that is font1 and font2 with different values. Now what I need to do, I need to use this parameter font dict inside the title method because I want to change the font style of the title inside plt.title method I have to use font dict and in which I am passing one of the dictionary. So here I am passing font 1. Also I can change the location of my title. So here I am passing loc. In loc we can specify left, right or center. So I am passing left because the default value is center. Same for x label I want to give the font style which is font 2. So in plt.x label again we need to access this parameter font dict and in which I am passing the variable font 2 and same for y label I am passing the font 2. Now using plt.plot method I am plotting days and maximum temperature. So let's run this code. So now you can notice this the style of title x label and y label is changed according to our value that we passed inside this font1 and font2. Title follows the style of font1 whereas x label and y label follows the style of font2. Now when we want to plot multiple data in a single graph. Like in this example, we are plotting three different data that is for days and minimum temperature, days and maximum temperature and days and average temperature. So in a single graph, we have three lines. Now it is difficult to understand from this graph that which line is for which data. Now to add this detail inside of a graph, we can use legend method that is plt.legend. So let's run this code. Here it add this extra information for each line that is our blue line shows the maximum value, orange line shows the minimum value and green line shows average value. Now how will it give the labels to it? For that we have to pass this label parameter inside the plot method. 
that is in plt.plot method we have to give the labels for that particular line and it will take the value for this legion from the label of plt.plot method you can see this the legion is located at the bottom right corner now if you want to change the location of this detail we can do that using loc parameter so as you can see here I am using this PLD dot region method and I am passing the value of LOC is equal to upper right. So when I run this code, now my legion information is shifted to upper right corner. So there are multiple values possible for the LOC that is best, upper right, upper left, lower left, lower right, right, center left, center right, lower center, upper center and center as well as all the string is associated with the location code so instead of passing this location if i pass simple location code then based on this location it will decide the location of the legion now there is an option for the best location which means if we do not want to specify any particular location we can apply this based method so this method will automatically calculate the best position for the legion Apart from this, we have two other set of parameters that is shadow. The default value of shadow is false but we can set it to true if we want to give the shadow effect to our legion details. And the next is font size. If we want to change the size of the font that is whether uh, we want to display in a large or small context, we can do that using this font size parameter. So let's run this code. So now you can notice uh, there is a slight shadow of the legion details as well as the font is now bigger comparatively. Now next is our grid method. So in this code also I am taking this x label, y label and title as well as I am plotting three different lines that is for days and max temperature, days and mean temperature, days and average temperature. Here I am using legion with the value location is equal to best, shadow is equal to true and font size is equal to small. Now I am using plt.grid method. So let's run this code and let's see what are the changes made by the grid method. So in the previous example you can see that the background doesn't have anything but in this output we have this check boxes in the background right. So this grid will add the check boxes in the background. Now rather than showing this boxes if we want to show only a single oriented line which means I want to show the line on x axis or y axis then I can use the parameter axis. So here in plt.grid I am passing axis is equal to x. Now it will display the lines only on the x axis. If I pass the value y here it will display the lines on the y axis only. Now we are also able to change the color of the grid lines that is I want to change the color from gray to green. I want to give the line style as well as line width. For that we have some parameters. So here to change the color we have parameter color. To change the style of the line we have line style parameter and to change the width of the line we have line width parameter. So let's run this code. So now you can see that the background lines are of the green color. The width of this line is comparatively thicker. It is represented in dashed manner. So this is how we can work with the grid method. So in today's lecture we discuss how we can plot points or lines. How we can change the style of the lines as well as points. How we can add the legions, labels as well as grid inside our graph. So that's it for this lecture. Thank you.